Uh, I started the slide out with this. Uh, I think all of you are very familiar what that is, what ship that is, right? This is uh, Star Trek Enterprise. Uh, when we were growing up in the 1970s, uh, 80s, this, were prob this was probably the most shown TV. This was the show. Uh, this was the TV show that uh, made several generation, several generations in this world dream of going to the stars. Okay, uh, and its final its statement, as they always start, space the final frontier. They always say to boldly go to where no man has gone before. Okay, so by, basically, this is what. Uh, is happening now in our space age astronomy. Okay, so the creator of this is Gene Roddenberry. Uh, I think you're I'm not sure if you're familiar with this uh, creator, this uh, this writer. Other than this show, he created a lot of science fiction stories. Also, I'll leave it up to you to find out. But Gene Roddenberry was one of the most proliferate, uh, uh, proficient writers in. Uh, science fiction. Okay. Now, uh, next slide, please. No? But before Gene Roddenberry came up with the TV shows, the first science fiction book that was ever written was based by Jules Burns. The book was then titled "From Earth to the Moon and Round the Moon." Okay, and it was in the 1870s that this person. Uh, wrote about being a man being able to go around the moon. If you're not familiar with Jules Burns, perhaps you heard of the other books such as 20,000 League Under the Sea, Journey to the Center of the Universe, uh, Center of the Earth, Senor Sulat. Uh, there are a lot of books that he has written. Okay? So in this concept, if you can look at the, if you can see the cap, if you can see the, okay, it's not very clear on the, on the screen. But basically, on the lower right hand is basically a a how do you call it? a rocket train. So it's basically four five compartments of a train shooting up into the sky towards the upper left corner. Supposed to be you should be seeing a moon on the upper left hand corner. It's a basically that was its concept that somebody that this train will be launched from a rock from a from a cannon and it will be strong enough and you would pull in with coal. And as you fill it with coal, it will propel itself going up to outer space. Okay? If you wonder how you're going to live out there, on the next slide, no? on the next slide, you will see that how he would have thought you would live inside the spaceship. You would have a small window on the upper left hand corner where you have a stairway going up. And then he would carry his dog beside him and he would have cameras also on the side on his lower left hand. These are the old design. No? Okay. You you can get the book or copy of the book. You will see this illustration there on this book already there. No? And then of course he put there his library there, his study there. He would take notes from there. The idea there is that he will look into the window, peer in there, and he will take notes as he sees it. No? So next slide, please. No? So with that, the biggest question is that how does one get up there? And here I have a series of slide pictures. No? Uh, I have a series of slide, uh, a series of movie pictures about how about uh, the attempts of sending rockets into the sky. No? As you can see, they all were kind of failing. This was since 1940. So imagine that 1870s. There was no concept of about shooting, uh, about going to outer space, being able to shoot into the, uh, going uh, above, above the skies. And here, there was, they were attempting, in 1940s, attempting to launch rockets. If you lived in those times of the years, you'd probably say, that's impossible. No? So, you can see this is during the German war also. No? So it was the Germans who kind of developed the rockets, uh, but the Germans lost, which was also a good thing. Uh, but the, later on, the next step was that 
the US, the Russians were the ones who started developing this technology to take it further off. Uh, let's take a look at this. Huh? Yeah. You know, I can let this play forever. This will take about 30 minutes, but I don't have 30 minutes of you know, slideshow time. No? So, but it's good to let you know that it's an entertainment piece seeing how these rockets tried to fly off during those times. Okay. Everything going in flames into the sky. Okay. And then, okay. So eventually, with all these attempts, all these experiments that they were doing, somehow one way, okay, this is USA failures. Let's just see this one here. This is how US did their test rocket. It's a slow approach. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> none other than the USSR, the Russians, okay? And it's just, uh, they were able to send the first satellite into orbit, named the Sputnik, okay? Sputnik 1. Uh, Sputnik is basically a 23-inch or 20, almost 2 feet in diameter uh, satellite, no? Uh, it was launched on October 4, 1957. It had its last transmission 22 days later. Up to and it lasted for 22 days. Its last transmission was on October 26, 1957, and in less than a year, or in about six and uh, four months' time, it re-entered Earth. No, all it did was as, as it went out to the into space, all it did was to send out signals, communication signals, and from that, the Russians were able to gather data on what how fast it was going, what was the, what was the uh, conditions of the air there, the, 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 the ionosphere in that area. Okay? So with that, this was one big step going to outer space. It took them only in 1957. No? From 1870, 1957. It's almost like 80 years, more than 80 years. 87 years actually before we were able to reach to the skies uh, reach uh, reach outer space okay so on the next slide no, there was now this one created some sort of war which is called the space wars already no? or even what we call the cold war the US and the USSR now both of them were now trying to prove to each other who could be who would have uh, the better technology and who was better, okay? So we have U.S. trying to say that we will send the first man in the moon. Uh, and, and Russia beat them by about three or four days only. Uh, Russia was able to send their first man to the moon, uh, not to the moon, rather, to space, rather, in 1961, April 12. And his name was Yuri Gargarin, and he rode on the Vostok 1. He stayed there in space for only about 90 minutes, and he was the first one, first person ever, to see what space, what the Earth looked like from outer space. And he would say that he would be able to see all sea, land, rivers, and sky, all in one view. It would have been interesting, no? So the Russians were the first ones to, land, you know, to, to reach there. Uh, and because of that, because that he was the first man ever to reach outer space, there would have, there was a big celebration. Of course, the Russians are proud that they were the first person, they were the first country to ever launch a man into space. 
Uh, but overall, the whole world also understood that it was the first human being that was able to launch into space. So here you have it, no? Uh, being congratulated, being the first man to ever to go to outer space, no? Okay? So, U.S. lost this race. Uh, you were not the first man to go to, the, to, to space. So they said, if we can't get the man to space, we will get the man to the moon. So nonetheless, it took them almost six years. Next slide. It took them almost six years no? for them to get to land on the moon. No? Okay. Uh, here what we have is a slide of uh, what they call this, the eagle, the Apollo, no? Apollo lander, Apollo trying to lander, trying to land, Apollo 11 lander, trying to land on the moon. No? Uh, this is actually a short video clip of how, how it landed. Okay. And this one sent a really, really big message to the world no? that we can actually reach the moon. I know that some of you may have heard uh, 20 years down the road, as early as 5 years, 10 years ago, we've been hearing stories of hoaxes that man never made, made it to the moon. Don't believe that. I wouldn't say that they really made it to the moon. Okay? There is no way they would spend billions and billions of dollars just to tell that they never made it to the moon. These people actually made it to the moon. So what you have here is just a short, you know, what you see is the clip. Uh, as you can see, they, you can see details of the craters as they were landing. Okay? So the two people in that crap, Buzz Aldrin and uh, Neil Armstrong, Neil Armstrong up to this day for, uh, no, is uh, telling everybody we should go now to, to do more, uh, to do space travel. No? Okay? He wants to say, he was trying to say to the world that what he saw should not be limited to only him, but he wants the world to have the opportunity to see what he saw out there in outer space. Right? No? So one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. 1967. This was 1967. See? I will not finish the slide. Let's go on. Next. Now, ever since 1967, ever since we learned how to launch, a, launch rockets into outer space, we have now been able, they have now been able to send out a lot of satellites. As you can see, these are just some satellites there. On the left-hand side, left-hand uppermost, it's the most famous Hubble telescope. 2007, 2008, I think, Kepler telescope on the lower left. You have an Iridium satellite in the middle, which is a communication telescope. You have Voyager, which is on the upper right-hand corner, which continues on and on into outer space, uh, which is the furthest man-made object from Earth right now. We have a couple of weather satellites down there. So we have put up a lot of satellites in terms of weather, communications, GPS, uh, what else can we think of? No? Uh, infrared, science, research, earth, uh, and earth sensors, so and so forth. No? And also, of course, military. No? Okay. Next slide. If we put them all together, you will probably see them going around the earth like that. No? There is a lot of uh, satellites right now that orbits earth, and that's how they orbit around earth. Okay. That doesn't look much to you, but if I put it on the next slide, no? on the next slide, that's how much satellites are out there. They're about or objects in space. Right now, there's as of 2013, there is about 17,000 objects in outer space. 17,000. Not necessarily satellites. Only less than 5% or about 5% are usable. The rest are just objects in outer space right now. No? Okay? Uh, ooh, it's kind of filled up already in that, of that screen already. No? Okay? So what I'm leading here is that ever since we learned about the technology of space flight already, it, from a government position, from something that was uh, limited to a government, eventually it became uh, how do you call this? Commercialized. And this is what commercialization does. No? It booms up, creates a large uh, industry where people take advantage of this. Okay? So next slide, please. 